In this video, we're going to talk about how to factor out the GCF, or the greatest common factor. And what this feels like when you do it, it feels like undistributing. So if you'll just always keep that in mind, I think it'll help you some. Think of pulling something back out of the, back out of the expression and putting it outside the parentheses. Something that's been distributed, we're going to undo that distributing process. So the goal is to undistribute the largest factor that we can. That's why they call it the greatest common factor. When we get finished, the terms in the parentheses should not have any common factors left because we're going to remove them all. Let's look at an example here. So I've got 5x squared plus 30. Notice that both of these numbers are multiples of 5. So that means it looks like a 5 has been distributed through here. I could undistribute that 5. And that would mean I would need two terms inside a pair of parentheses. So 5 times something would have to make x squared. So that would be 5x squared. And then for my second term, 5 times this would have to make 30. So now check it out. 5 times x squared is 5x squared. 5 times 6 is 30. So I'm going to have x squared plus 6 inside here. And look at my x squared plus 6. They don't share any factors anymore. They can't both be divided by the same thing. And factoring means to leave something in multiplication form. So um, always when we factor, we're trying to take something apart and write it where it looks like a multiplication problem. All right, here is 18x to the third plus 27x squared. If you look uh, at the two coefficients, I have 18 and 27, which can both be divided by 9. But now this has a third power of x, and this has a second power of x. That means they both, they share a factor of x to the second because this one has x to the second plus an extra x. So they both contain at least two x factors. That means I can write outside the parentheses 9 and x squared. Now inside the parentheses I'll have to have two terms. 9 times something has to make 18, so that'll be 2 and x squared times something has to make x to the third, so that will be x. For my second term, 9 times something has to make 27, so that will be 3, and x squared times something has to be x squared. So that would be 1, but there's no need to write times 1 here, because that's just silly. So now check it out. If I do 9x squared times 2x, I get 18x to the third. And 9x squared times 3, I get 27x squared. Also, look at my 2x plus 3. They don't share any factors. They don't both have an x. They can't both be divided by 2. They can't both be divided by 3. So these are now completely different from each other. And that's how we know that we've factored correctly. Because if I distribute 9x squared... I can get back to the original problem, and the, the terms inside the parentheses do not share any factors. Let's look at that same problem again. But what if you didn't realize that 9 would go into both of these? What if you just thought 3 would do it? And what if you didn't realize that you could get x squared? What if you only thought you could have x? So we'll take a look at that. If I try to undistribute 3x, well... 3 times 6 is 18, and x times x to the second would give us x to the third. And then here, 3 times 9 makes 27, and x times x makes x to the second. Okay, so now look at inside our parentheses. I have 6 and 9. Well, that's a problem because 6 and 9 can both be divided by 3. Therefore, I did not get the largest possible number outside the parentheses. And look at the x's. I have x to the second power here and x to the first power here. They both still have a common factor of x. That means the x power I put out here was not large enough. So when you get finished, there should not be anything that they have in common. 
So now here's a tip. The largest variable power that you can put outside the parentheses is always the smallest one in the expression. So notice that right here my smallest variable power was 2 and I ended up with 2 outside the parentheses. We're going to get a few more examples here. So let's factor 14x to the second minus 21x. First of all, I look at my coefficients and I see that 7 will go into each one. So I know I'll have 7 outside the parentheses. And then I look at my x's and I see x to the second and x to the first. The smallest variable power is x to the first. So that means I'll have x outside the parentheses. Now inside the parentheses, 7x times something has to give me this term. So to get 7 times uh, something to make 14, I'll need 2. And x times something to make x squared, I'll need x. Alright, now for the second term, 7x times, 20, times something has to give us 21x. So I'll need a 3, so it needs to be minus 3. So see, whatever sign I have in the problem is, stays there usually. And let's close the parentheses. Now let's make sure two things. If you distribute 7x times 2x, you get this. And 7x times negative 3, you get this. So that's okay. Now let's make sure that there's not anything shared inside the parentheses. They don't both have an x. They don't both have a factor of 2. They don't both have a factor of 3. So we can't get anything else common between these two. Therefore, we know we got out the largest common factor. And we're ready to look at the next example. So here are three terms. 24x to the third minus 15x squared plus 33. Look at all three coefficients and see that everything here can be divided by 3. Also, look at the x's. Here's x to the third and here's x to the second. And then this one does not have any x's at all. So that means I won't be able to factor out an x. So we'll have 3 outside the parentheses. And then inside the parentheses, 3 times 8x to the third will give us 24x to the third. Then here, 3 times 5x squared will make that middle term and 3 times 11 will make that third term. So you can double check that when you distribute that you get all three of these terms back and you also need to double check that they can't all be divided by the same thing. So it's good to make sure that they don't all still have the same variable and they don't all have an x so that's good and it's good to make sure that like this could be divided by 2 but this can't. So uh, if it could, we'd have a problem, but this is just the way we need it to be. So now we're going to look at some that have two variables at a time. And here's one for us that has three terms. I see that each of these terms can be divided by 8. And I also see that my smallest x power is x to the first. And I see that my smallest y power is y to the first. So I've got the common factor for the coefficients, the smallest x, and the smallest y. Now, in parentheses, let's put what it takes to get these three terms back. 8 times 3 makes 24. x times x squared would make x to the third. y times y would make y to the second. Okay, for the middle term, 8 times 1 would make 8. Then x times x would make x squared. And I don't need any extra y power. I've got y to the first here, and that's all I want. So the middle term's just x. Okay, for 40, x, y to the third, 8 times 5 would make 40. Um, x to the first needs to stay, you know, I've got an x, I don't need another one, 
And then I have a y out here, but I need y to the third, so I'm going to need y to the second in the parentheses. Now double check that all the coefficients can't be divided by the same thing. And they can't. 3 and 1 and 5 don't have any common factors. Make sure that not all the terms have an x. We're in good shape there. Make sure that not every term has a y. So we're also, also in good shape there. Okay, new example. Let's look at 8x to the 5th, y to the 3rd, minus 18x to the 4th, y to the 4th, plus 6x squared, y to the 7th. Check out all your coefficients. They all can be divided by 2. Check out your smallest x power. It is x to the 2nd. And find your smallest y power. It is y to the 3rd. That's what goes on the outside of the parentheses. Now inside the parentheses, 2 times 4 makes 8, so let's get a 4. x to the 3rd times x squared makes x to the 5th, so we'll put x to the 3rd. y to the 3rd times 1 makes y to the 3rd, but there's no need to write times 1 here, so that's all we need for, plus for the uh, first term. Now for the middle term, it's going to be minus. 2 times 9 makes 18 x squared times x squared makes x to the fourth and y to the third times y makes y to the fourth. Okay, for the next term, 2 times 3 makes 6. x squared times 1 makes x squared, so no need to write times 1. y to the third times y to the fourth makes y to the seventh. So we'll have y to the fourth here. Now make sure that you don't have any common factors between them and make sure that they don't all have an x and make sure that they don't all have a y because those would be common factors as well. Okay, so now just a couple of ways you'll know that you've done it correctly. We've been talking about these, but just so you have it in writing. If you can distribute and get back your original expression, you know that you've got a good factor outside the parentheses. And if you look at the terms that are inside and make sure that they don't have any common factors, then that's also a good sign. You need to check both of these things off before you know you've done it right.